The focus today is whether or not an NLP problem is actually solvable and how do you know that? And then some things to think about to really set yourself up for success if you're working on a new NLP project. Step one, make sure what you want is possible within your means. And I'll talk a little bit about what I mean by that, but obviously money is one of those means, but also time and data availability. So first of all, is the thing, is the thing that you want to do learnable? I've had a fair number of people come to me with questions about projects that they're interested in, and the thing that they want to do is fundamentally not learnable from text, right? So a good example of this would be, let's say some business leader has proposed that, oh, there's like four pe types of people. There's like, I don't know, hedgehogs and hamsters. So imagine that there's like hedgehogs, hamsters, foxes, and iguanas or something. And there's this like framework this business leader has proposed for like the types of people that there are. That may be a useful, helpful framework, but if there's not good, solid evidence that you can look at text and extract from the text the specific thing that you are trying to extract, like before you even get started, have other people done this? Is this something that humans would be able to do, right? If you and five of your friends sat down and tried to do the task you're trying to get a machine to do with the same input, would you be able to do it? Would you be able to do it consistently? Someone brought up on Twitter a really good point. Is there good uh, agreement between the raters that's sometimes called inter-annotator agreement or inter-rater reliability, IRR, you'll see both of those. Um, and if those things are not the case, then probably you're gonna have a very hard time trying to do machine learning on it because it's something that's maybe not easy or possible to learn at all. Another thing is, is it possible to measure success? So a lot of machine learning approaches, there will be some sort of metric that you are optimizing for. You'll hear people talk about things like loss functions. And basically this is like a number and your learning process, you know what you want that number to look like, right? You want it to be like 100 for accuracy or zero for loss or whatever it is that you're going for. And you know if you compare two things, whether it's getting better or worse. If you don't have that, it is very difficult to do machine learning. It is possible, but you're probably gonna have some, you're probably gonna have to create some sort of uh, numeric proxy for the thing that you wanna do. Another thing to think about is, do you have data? And I know, you know, there's been a lot of grand statements about data being oil or something like that, which is, Ooh, something that I don't love. <laughs> I don't love that framing, but people definitely use it. And you may not have the data, and you may not have the data because you just haven't looked for it, or you may not have the data because it doesn't exist. So another sort of like type of question that I get really commonly is like, do you have very specific type of data? Um, and if it does exist, can you get it? Can you get it in a computer readable format? Can you get it in a parsable format? Do you, is someone gonna send you a bunch of PDFs? with maybe it's in a script that doesn't have, you know, good Unicode support, right? Or maybe it's in a language that has multiple scripts and this is in one of the scripts that there's not a lot of language data in and all of the, the language data you have existing is in another script, right? So that's a good first step. If you don't have it, you're probably gonna need to make it or get it. Do you have budget or time for this? Collecting data, creating data sets is, Hard. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of specialized knowledge. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of attention. We've got a question from Lava Lamp. Uh, sometimes for me, extra information is required for understanding text fully, such as knowing who wrote it and the perspective they are approaching a subject from. Yeah, definitely. That could be, I think that's a great example of something that may not be learnable just from the text, right? So if in order to create a judgment about the author of the text, you have to have additional auxiliary information about the author, um, just as an example, someone uses a slur in text. Is that abusive or not? Well, is the person who used the slur from the group that that slur refers to and reclaiming it? Or is it a person from a group that has historically used that slur in a derogatory way? 
the identity of the author can render the same text abusive or not abusive, and you can't get that just from the text alone, right? So this is why, like, just looking for the n-word is not going to tell you whether a text is abusive or not. It might be a signal, it might be a very important signal, but who is saying it also matters. And also, is the data that you can get representative of what the system is going to see when it's in production? Because presumably you're building something you want to use and you want to use it in a certain situation. But let's say you've collected a big corpus of language data, you're like, great, I'm going to use this language data to you already have. Hopefully you have data and you have identified what it is and you've gotten it into the format that you want. Start with what you have before you go collecting a whole bunch of other data. Measure and update often. So measuring your data, does the data that you have that your model has seen still match the distribution of the data? that is being shown to it once it's in production. Are you updating that data? As you get new data, are you, you adding in? I work for a company called Raza and we have this concept called conversation-driven development, which is specifically doing this with conversation data and chatbot development, but it's also just like generally the case. And any big company that is doing machine learning modeling will be adding more data. <laughs> I, I should say that. The ones that I have interacted with and have been in a position to know whether or not they're adding data, they are adding data. And add more data often. Basically, as, as soon as you have it, if you have licenses, if you have permissions, if it's legal for you to do it, add more data. And also temper your expectations. I know there's a lot of excitement around machine learning, and just because a neural network is a universal function approximator doesn't mean that you have available to you everything that you would need to approximate a function for your use case that is actually useful, right? So you may not have everything that you need, right? So something I like to say is machine learning is not magic. It relies really heavily on the data that you provide it. If you don't have enough data with enough signal to create a model that can extrapolate from what it's seen, right, your task is not currently doable, yeah? So this is particularly people who are, again, brand new to machine learning. I remember someone from a, a nonprofit uh, I was talking to like a couple years ago, it was a while ago, uh, and they were like, we'd really like to like build a model to identify like when a wrongful, to identify wrongful convictions that have been overturned to like help identify like other wrongful convictions, which I think is, I think that's a, a hard, interesting problem, but the data that they had was 11 cases and there, that it's just not enough, right? It's just not enough data for a machine learning model to look at, you know, the thousands of cases and be like, these ones are also probably wrongful convictions. And it's not that it's not a good problem to solve, it's that there wasn't enough signal, there wasn't enough training data to automate that. And you've definitely, you, I mean, I certainly have, you've probably heard like really sensational reports about like, this AI has solved whatever, or like, soon robots will be smarter than toddlers or border collies or whatever it is. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to get too much into like talking about what intelligence is, um, but if you just don't have the data density, it's, it's never going to happen. And if you try to make it happen, you'll do you'll end up doing something called noise mining. So this is more from the scientific research literature. Specifically, it's about p hacking. So this is where you've run a big experiment, and the effect that you've predicted just isn't there. There's nothing really interesting. Like the null was true, or at least you failed to reject the null. But instead of being like, oh, well, oh, well, you know, I spent five years running these experiments, guess there's nothing there. You know, you spend a lot of time sort of like carving up the data and doing multiple comparisons and really trying to find like an interesting story in there somewhere. And if you look and dig long enough, deep enough in a data set, you will eventually come up with a random coincidence that looks like a story. But that doesn't mean that those random coincidences are a story, and it doesn't mean that that is something you want to model to extrapolate in new places. Another thing to know about, of especially like the first time you try a machine learning problem on a given data set, is that there's a pretty common pattern where if you do have a big, data, big enough data set, there is enough signal, you know, you have a well-formed problem, you'll get the low-hanging fruit, like the easy to extract signal pretty quickly, and then you'll plateau. So this one is more for like tempering your manager's expectations. So saying like, 
hey, we're probably, if we, we do have everything that we need to make this work, we'll probably get like some pretty big gains the first couple things we try. And then to get like that last five, 10%, if that's what you're looking for, you're really going to have to try a lot more different things. These are gonna be the things that are hard to find given the data. And the first things that you found are the things that are easy to find given your data. My preference is I tend to go towards like good enough is good enough. Maybe it's worth it to spend a another three months on a project to get a 2% boost? Maybe it's not. And for me, usually it's not. Another thing to think about is the data that's coming into your system is going to change and you should have a way to account for this and to handle this change and to deal with it. That might be updating your model. That might be, you know, doing online learning. That might be training completely new models with completely new data. It just depends on what it is that you're you're interested in. How can I say that things like language data will change? Well, language is changing all the time. All languages that are living. Um, it's, that is a fact of language. No language that has human speakers has ever been static. There is no capital E English that was perfect at one point in time and has not moved since that time. It doesn't exist. And I think this is my final point. A thing that is true about machine learning and is true about all machine learning models is that they will make mistakes. Machine learning is like fancy guessing, basically. Um, and unlike something like, you know, other software systems that are more rule-based, you won't know when they do, right? You will have undetected mistakes. So those are going to be false positives or false negatives, or, you know, I'm trying to think what that would be for like reinforcement learning, but like your system's going to make mistakes and you're not going to know about them. This is a fundamental truth of all machine learning systems. Before you decide to use a machine learning system for something, make sure you're actually okay with that. Make sure this is a system where making mistakes a portion of the time and you don't know what that portion is going to be is okay. So if it's a very high stake situation, you have some checks, right? Or maybe you just don't use machine learning at all, right? Or maybe it's a very low stake situation and it's fine. It doesn't matter if there's mistakes because it's just going to like, you know, someone's game will give them like the wrong colored gem or whatever. So think about that, <laughs> really think about that before you decide that machine learning is right for you and your project. Just to review, when you're starting in a machine learning or an NLP project, make sure what you want to do is possible and it's possible for you given what you currently have. Make sure you're asking the right question. Make sure that you're framing this as the right task. If you haven't done much NLP, this might take a little bit of work, right? Trying to figure out, okay, there's a bunch of tasks, which one is most relevant for me? Make sure you're working incrementally, continue to improve your model, continue to add data. Adding data will generally get you more than improving your model. And temper your expectations. Be really realistic. Know when people are trying to be hypey rather than honest and start to develop a sense for that. And also know that machine learning systems will make mistakes and decide how much that matters to you. Thanks for joining. I hope this was helpful. I hope you all have a great Tuesday and I will talk to you later. Bye.